kids are so blocked in their potential um, by the self-doubt, insecurities about their worth, especially if they've been abused. And so I began to develop a program that uses um, self-awareness and assertive communication and physical self-defense skills to um, empower. It's all about empowerment. Welcome to OTR, Over the Rainbow, Achieving Mental Health for Real. This podcast offers hope to many people who needlessly suffer from mental health issues. Your host, Bob Adelman, brings you information on how you can recover from any mental health issue and achieve a happier life. Each episode interviews experts like doctors, counselors, and life artists who give helpful tips on living a happier life. But most importantly, Bob interviews ordinary people who have suffered with a mental health issue, some on the brink of or attempted to take their own lives. Each one has recovered to lead a much happier life. Most of the guests have books or websites with more info that you can use for recovery. You can do it too. Bob's notes on today's show follows. Suzanne Jean is director of Fit4 Defense, who conceived and now operates Powered, a holistic life program that inspires confidence in participants to be heard, safe in the community, and free from abuse. Over 50 years in social services. Suzanne is a member of Canadian Professional Speakers Association and has empowered thousands of children, youth, and seniors to stand strong communicate their rights, stay safe, assertive communication, and self-defense. Suzanne has trained in the martial arts since 1975 and teaches karate, tai chi, and self-defense. She is an insured member of Karate BC, holds a national coaching certification, and a knight in black belt in karate. Now, here's Bob with today's show. Hello, Suzanne. How are you? I am doing fantastic. Welcome to the show. Could you tell us a little about yourself? I have a background in social services. I've been working about 50 years in community-based social services. And I've also um, practiced and studied martial arts for most of my life. But I did. I was diagnosed very early with ADHD. Okay. And in that time, it was um, a very misunderstood in terms of what the behaviors were. I was put on a lot of medication that I reacted terribly to and they had to to, uh, take me off of that. And um, then in all their wisdom, they decided to accelerate me in school. So for every um, year of school, I did did two years in one. Wow. And ended up graduating, as you can imagine, very, very young. Well, it was um, not the best thought out plan because, you know, um, <laughs> you can develop intellectually, but developmentally, I, was, I wasn't I was even in puberty and I was already out of high school, yeah. uh, out of elementary school going into high school. And that that's pretty hard on you. Yeah, that could be very hard. Um, I took a gap year and then I went off to university, but I was so hyper, I didn't sleep very much. And, um, what age were you again? So I was about 14, 15. Okay. That's really, that's very hard. I don't know. Did, did your parents realize the extent of the problem or did they try to get you individual help of some kind with the ADHD? No, I was one of six kids and, um, they didn't understand what was going on. Okay. And they didn't question, you know, that. Again, at, at that time, the doctors sort of were, they were gods, right? What they said went. Um, so, yeah, my doctor was really concerned. I, I was not sleeping very much, and I was um, doing many, many activities all simultaneously. And he basically said, you've got two choices. You either go to Tai Chi or I'm putting you on a meditation. And I don't know if you know what Tai Chi is. Oh, yeah. I have I have a black belt in Harangdo, Korean martial art. So 
I, I know about uh, all that Tai Chi and, and all those things. So you know about the, the value of martial arts. Oh, yeah, very um, much so. Capitalism like ours, right? Yeah, I mean, it's a very spiritual type of sport, and I enjoyed it immensely until I wound up getting hurt and I couldn't participate anymore. I was like 99. Mm. Well, I just chose the type over the medication. I didn't want to have medication. And I went down to Chinatown to the class, and I hated it. It was just so slow. And But then at the end of the class, the woman came up to me and says, oh, uh, we go for a big feast after class in Chinatown, and it's only about 250 a person. <laughs> I said, I'm in. Yeah. So I went off to, to eat with everybody, and then I went back. Um, and eventually, it really took. And I found that... Um, it helped me calm my metabolism, and I felt that I was sleeping better and was able to to slow down. With with the karate, with the time too, yeah. To fast forward that, I came out um, from the East Coast to the West Coast, and I was looking for a Tai Chi class, and I found one. Because I'm, I'm looking at this as my prescription. Right. This is what I have to do, right, to, to, to balance mind and body. Well, exercise is very important for mental health. Absolutely. So I um, I began to take the Tai Chi, and the, my Tai Chi teacher was actually a karate master. And he kept saying, why are you doing Tai Chi? You should come to karate. And I said, no, I don't want to come to karate. He said, you should come to karate. You were born for this. So I said, okay, I'll go to one class and uh, see how I like it. And I just n- never turned back. I walked out the door and went and got my ID, and I'm still practicing. I'm just yeah. um, training for my third degree black belt this year, and I'm seven years old. So it's pretty good. <laughs> yeah, it's great. Karate has uh, taught me a lot about myself and what I what limits I can push and all that. But unfortunately, like I said, I, w- I didn't get a big chance to, to use it. Nobody attacked me or anything. But speaking of getting attacked, um, you are, uh, you have an organization, uh, Pit for Defense. That's it. Could you talk a little bit about that organization, uh, you lo- at your location, and what it's all about? Well, I was working with child care workers and at-risk youth, um, and at that time, not a lot was known about trauma. And I was working with kids in the system. And they were being criminalized for their behaviors. And I started to work with youth care workers to try to teach de-escalation and ways that they could manage conflict and manage aggression. And I began to see how powerful it was to build the confidence through uh, the physical medium. And it was uh, really successful. And then I started to think, well, if it, if it works so well with the um, child care workers, I wonder how it would work with kids. Right. And kids are so blocked in their potential um, by the self-doubt, insecurities about their worth, especially if they've been abused. Yes. And so I began to develop a program that uses um, self-awareness, and assertive communication and physical self-defense skills to um, empower. It's all about empowerment. Right. And I based the program on four pillars, the first being attention, and a lot of exercises about really tuning into the here and now and coming back to observing ourselves and others and the environment and looking at expanding um, perception. Mm -hmm. Uh, the second pillar is awareness and it's the heart and soul of the program and it's all about self-study and and really helping people discover what it is they believe and what they feel and what they need and want and feel that they can deserve those things but then um, teaching effective communication so they can express that and Mm -hmm. um so an example would be a boundary, like oh, I'll teach that, talk about boundaries and teach boundaries and I'll use a physical exercise. And then once they kind of feel that in the body, then I move it to kind of talk about emotional boundary, uh, boundaries. Mm-hmm. 
Um, so it's really about um, breaking through self-imposed limitations and, and you know, working to kind of help people change the descriptions that they have of themselves from from, from the past and from their trauma right. and their mental mental illnesses. Mm-hmm. Um, addiction addictions plays a huge role in this scenario. Um, the fourth pillar is avoidance and teaching um, people how to stay safe how to understand how their brains work and um, learn to read and interpret signs and cues and triggers in, the, in, in again, great right in the environment where they can keep themselves safe. Right. And then the last pillar is the action, and it's teaching how to defend yourself physically and emotionally if your bully is threatened and how to be able to hold your space, hold your ground, and... Um, it's amazing. Like I can, the change I can, I can see in ten weeks. My program, my written cur- curriculum for youth is ten weeks. It's night and day. I believe night it. and day. Because I'm kind of bypassing all the cognitive stuff and going right into the emotion and into the um, the physical. And you probably know from karate. I, I I use focus pads and they get to smack things and it's such a release, <laughs> you know. It's such a, an amazing experience to be able to hit a focus pad and feel that yeah, I am strong. Yeah, I, I think you <laughs> called it the four A's. I noticed, so that's a good way to remember it. Yeah, I call it the four. A's. And in fifth four defense, in in the name of my organization, the four is actually a four, and it stands for attention, awareness, avoidance, and action. So those those concepts kind of they all uh, integrate into each other mm-hmm. as well. Mm-hmm. Um, but the other thing about the program, I call the program Power Ed because it's all about um, it's power education, and um, my my what I have a big sign and it says mastering yourself is true power you know when it, when it comes to bullying it's not about uh an outward thing it's be, being strong and confident strong confident safe healthy kids don't bully there's no need to bully and in, in this day and age bullying is a big subject uh i always see videos of bullying all the time on buses inside the school so it sounds like a very, you know, almost mandatory type program for for children to uh, learn all these lessons that they need to know to combat, you know, the big bad bear that comes after them and how to how to yeah. avoid that. And you know, it's it's very important. Yeah, I always preach that that people should exercise, and certainly karate is not just exercise, but it's also teaching the mind, uh, spirituality, and key power, and things like that. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. And bullying is a global social problem now. I mean, it's it's been named by the World Health Organization, and it's related to so many mental illnesses. It's related to depression, anxiety, addiction, unemployment, illness, suicide, domestic violence, and poor work productivity. All those things are impacted. Uh, by bullying. And I also teach, I teach in the work, I am actually doing a workshop tomorrow in um, a work site because little bullies grow up to be big bullies. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. (laughs) And they go to work and they bully people. (laughs) I got bullied a lot at work, matter of fact, because of my ADHD, my defenses aren't as good as most people. So it's easy for me, you know, it was easy for them to kind of pick on me. You know, I was a big tall guy and they Kind of made fun of me because I I didn't have the social skills to prevent it. So that's a big thing. I was just going to ask you during your uh, courses: Do you run across people that have ADHD or depression of any type? And if you do, oh, yeah. what, what do you talk to the mother and uh, approach them? And what what's their reaction if you do? Um. I I see a lot of ADHD. I see a lot of anxiety, but I see a lot of uh, again. I see 
a lot of kids labeled with ADHD because of their behaviors. And it's not actually, it has nothing to do with that. Yeah, it right? goes both ways. Sometimes uh, they really have ADHD and, and the parents are in denial as well. But again, yeah, yeah. there are a lot of people I talk to, almost everybody I talk to says they have it. <laughs> be honest with you, uh, a lot of people I talk to say, oh, yeah, I had that in school or I had, you know, at one time or another. Mm -hmm. But you really have to understand exactly what it means and the real hardships of it because mm -hmm. life is hard enough, but then you add on making everything hard. I mean, if I write a memo, it takes me twice the time because I have to proofread it five or six times, maybe more. Mm -hmm. And and I also have dyslexia, so I add that on top of boom. So what I think happens yeah. to people while they're young uh, is that they get, they lose confidence. They think they're stupid. They don't want to try anymore. People call them lazy and stuff like that. But none of that's true. I mean, if you weren't getting dopamine to your brain, you'd be lazy too. You you don't get any yeah. reward for what you're doing. And that's why they have medication. But on top of medication, even better than medication, is eating right and exercising. Because medication Absolutely. is very tricky. You just don't want to go on it right away and say, okay, it's going to take care of everything. Now I can go back to eating 10 pounds of sugar. Absolutely, Bob. You know what I'm finding, and I've been adding more and more um, mindfulness into my lesson plan, and it's being so well received. Um, I teach, the program is for children, youth, adults, um, seniors. I have a seniors program, but my um, love is really with the youth. So I've been piloting a lot of stuff, a lot of things around um uh, developing some happy hormones, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> teaching breathing techniques, right? right, right. Uh, teaching meditation. Yeah, it's so and important. It, and, and it's really, they're really enjoying it. Yeah. And I, I, I think you said before, I think this is, this is life program stuff. It yeah. should be in the school. I was, I, as a child, I, w I was completely out of it. Completely. And, and even as an adult, I'm out of it. But if I had a program like that, I would have latched onto it and probably got some confidence and wouldn't have all this, the, all these problems. So what I try to do with this podcast is to inform people on every level, uh, what they can do to make themselves better, to make themselves a little bit happier. Um, mm -hmm. there is absolutely no excuse for not exercising and not eating right. I've done it. I think I had times where I ate like a pig, but I'm at a point. I'm older now. I can't handle eating bad food or not exercising. So I am now going into that kind of a program. So I'd be prepared. And like I said before, I think it's, it's mandatory. If it's not karate, then something else to, yeah. to go along with the schools and the schools have to be aware of the problem. And that is a big problem because even to yeah. this day, they don't know that this child is ADHD. They're still going to say he's lazy. Mm -hmm. Oh, he has potential, but he's not doing that good and things like that. But instead of doing that, let's, let's try to do solutions like you have. And, and that, you know, that's, that's great. I mean, um, that's what interested me when you approached me that you're helping such a uh, big problem. I mean, it's, it's not a small yeah. problem. Little girls are getting their heads beaten in. So, oh, I know. It's, it's big. And, and, you know, getting suicide on. on oh, God, so yes. No, I mean, it's terrible. I mean, the things that we see are just, um, they're, they're extreme, extreme, and they're. Yeah, you can't process it. Too, you know, most of the youth, they're, they're so, they live in screens. Yeah. yeah. And a big part, one of the things I've done in my life that I'm very proud of is I did start a mental, um, a mental health organization in my city. And I learned so many things from that experience. 
But one of the main things I realized was the the need we have. We're we're social beings. We need to belong. Yes, we do. I mean, social contact. I was so desperate to to be neurotypical, to be exactly like other people. I would mask it. I still do. And other people, even my children, don't understand that my brain is different and that Mm -hmm. I'm not just a loser or something. I I have, you know, rights and, you know, I I have, you know, I'm entitled to respect as, as much as the next guy. And so mm-hmm. that's the kind of thing, that's the thing I try to uh, emulate on, on the air here with all these examples of people getting better and of uh, these programs like your, what you have to help these people. I mean, it's, we got to help them. And yeah. I don't care. I'll take the rain, but you know, there's only so much I can do with my limited capacity. But I, I, if I can get somebody else to do it, and they, and then create this domino effect, uh, you know, six degrees of separation, uh, I yeah, can get people. Absolutely. I can get people moving at least. I mean, you know, Martin Luther King and all those great leaders. I'm not saying I'm like that. I'm just saying. They all said, the hell with it, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to buck this is because it's not fair, and we've had enough, everybody's had enough. And personally, without getting too emotional, I've had enough. I, I've had enough of people saying, you're lazy, you're rude, you're this, you're that. And when, when really, there's no way I can change my brain. I am who I am. Either accept me or you don't, and that's what I do now. And the tragedy of it is I've pretty much lost my children for now. They may come back to me, but right now, they don't want to hear anything to do with any of this. They don't even listen mm-hmm. to this podcast. So Yeah, they oh, there he goes again. <laughs> exactly. Oh, there's the embarrassment we have to, you know, why isn't he? My daughter uh, used to say to me, Dad, why did you do that? Like I would, I would drop a piece of paper out of my pocket, and she looked up at me and said, "What are you doing?" Mm-hmm. Or else she, I'll, I'll ask her a question. Goes, Dad, I told you that five minutes ago. What are you talking about? What's wrong with you? And yeah. this is what people deal with day in and day out, and it's terrible, and it has to stop. That's you know, that's the thing I preach. In this program, it, it's great. You are you're out there talking about it, and that's what's important. You've got to shine the light on the issues, you know. Well, you're taking action. You're doing stuff. More people should get up and do something. Just don't complain about it. Let's get up and do something. You know, I see lots of little videos about. Yeah, okay, it's, it's bad. It's bad. Okay, it's bad. But what do you? I mean, just the fact that they made a video is doing something about it. I mean, mm-hmm. let's stop. Let's come out of the shadows, please. We don't have to be like these people anymore. We don't have to be something we're not anymore because it drives everybody crazy. And, and, and we need to stand together as a community to put a stop to this stuff too, right? Exactly. I mean, and that's, again, the social aspect is really important, I think. I call my program Power Ed because it's fundamentally a study of power. Right. And, um, to really understand that and how you true power can be mastering yourself is, is a, a wonderful image for kids. They really. Oh, if I just had that when I was 11 years old, instead of yeah. going into OCD rituals, uh, having my parents get mad at me, having them hit me, my father actually hit me, which he never hit anybody. I mean, but I would piss him off about something that I really couldn't control anymore, the OCD. I'd piss them out. You know, the bathroom would be a mess, for instance. I had hand-washing problems. And yeah. and he would hit me. That was his solution. Uh, I mean, he was a nice person, but enough is enough. I mean, I, that's all. I mean I'm 65 years old. I want to leave something to everyone else. And, and what I'm trying to say on this podcast is let's do something. You're doing something. Mm-hmm. I'm doing something very little, but something. 
Everybody mm-hmm. needs to do something. That's what I'm trying yeah. to get across. I didn't mean to get on a soapbox there. <laughs> or maybe I did. Uh, uh, but um, It's important shining that light. So we got to talk about your, your book, though, before anything else. Um, I think it's called, what, Stop Bullying? Is that- it's called Bullying Stops Here. And uh, in, that, in that book, actually, talking about doing something, the last chapter is how you can get a, an anti-bullying program going in your school or your business. There you go. Um, and it's kind of it's seven steps on how to do that. And um, I have done it many times, and it's surefire. Um, do something about it. I'm, I'm 100% with you on that one. That it's yeah. not enough to just go, oh, my gosh, my son just got shot. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and nobody then, uh, said anything about it. And then they say he's crazy. They played a crazy card. Oh, uh, here's a, we got another crazy card right here. Uh, that's why he shot him. He was crazy. Yeah. We're not crazy, <laughs> you know, even though we do crazy things all the time. Uh, but we're not crazy, believe me. That's the way people are justifying. The book is about like it's transformational stories. Each, you know. Um, with the exception of the uh, the last chapter on how to get a program going. It's um, inspirational stories on how people with many, many challenges, many mental health challenges, many physical challenges overcome um, and really find that strength, that inner strength and deal with their fear and um, through the program. It's all, it's all about the fear. It's all about fear. That, 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 that is our biggest problem. At the root core of every person, they're afraid. This is what we have to solve. We have to make them not so afraid or only afraid when it's appropriate. Because how do we know the difference between social media and reality? We we were losing it. We're losing that reality. Well, that's the point I was making earlier. Kids are losing it. They don't have, you know, they are so, and it's not just, it's their phones, it's social media, they're gaming. They're watching television, Netflix, they're virtual I mean, they're playing. the screen yeah. all the time. So they don't know, you know, if I pinch you, that's going to hurt. <laughs> yeah, they just see people getting shot up all the time. And they figure that's normal. I mean, they go yeah. into a theater or wherever and shoot people. I mean, we definitely have a big crisis in this, in this country and around the world. And if we don't start doing something, I'm not going to live forever. If we don't start doing something... We're going to return to the, the day of feudalism and fascism and all of that stuff. Because mm-hmm. in this country, I was just talking to my son today. He's a Republican. And he's like, he just every talking point, he tells me. And I say, no, it's not that simple. Everybody has to have a voice. Everybody has to be counted. And that's what made America great from the beginning. We started counting people. We left a few off like the Indians and the, and the black people. But we have to get better than that. We have to make it a society that we can be proud of. And and I don't see it right now. Mm-hmm. We're just well, we we're polarized and fighting against each other. Yeah. The other thing about what I, my program, and I think that it's really an important um, attraction, is that it's really fun. Like oh, I couldn't yeah. get kids, I couldn't get kids and adolescents to do this if it wasn't really fun. So there's lots That's of great. I teach through lots of games and um, they really enjoy it. I yeah, think they, that uh, they get to socialize. That's, That's the important thing. I use it as a transition too. When we were talking about heavy stuff, I use that those techniques to kind of move things on, you know, and to debrief it. And I've been criticized for, um, well, not criticized, but challenged on including uh, sensitive material in, in, with youth. To, but I oh, think please. we need to talk about stuff please like this. We need to talk about sexual abuse. We need to talk about How about things. cutting? Okay, we need to talk about I had people drop me because I showed a picture of somebody who cut themselves. Uh, somebody- I, yeah, it was an episode called Amy, uh, as long as the cuts are not too deep. That's what they told the mother. 
take her home as long as the cut is not too deep. P kids are cutting and self-harming at an alarming rate. And we got to do something. I don't know. If we don't do anything, we're going to be in bad shape. We're just going to be in bad shape. So, I mean, I want my grandson to have a great life, maybe a little 150. But first, we got to do something. Because I, I see it in the kids today. They, they don't know what hit them. You know, technology hit them, like, you know, on the head. <laughs> it's like... Yeah. From all the time I spend with youth, I'm really saddened by how discouraged they are about the world. Like, they well, are. Why shouldn't they be? I mean, yeah, they're it's just, pretty discouraging, especially yeah. when you look at older people are still doing corporal punishment. and It's sad, and I don't know what to do about it. I can't even solve it within my own family. Well, you, should, you should do my program. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I would love it, but I could hardly walk. I mean, I'm almost crippled at this point. And oh, no. yeah, I mean, it's okay. I mean, I'm old, but I had my day with with physical activity. I used to love it. See, that's what that's what the kids miss today. Going outside at nine o'clock in the morning on a summer day and just staying out until supper. Mm-hmm unsupervised miles yeah. away from your house yeah that, those days are gone that's my memory as a kid yeah those days are gone mm -hmm. and it's, it's terrible and 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 we need to replace it with with organized sports and activities and socializing with others other than social media and the adults have to learn when it, when one of the techniques I do in the program in Power Ed is I, it's called pair and share, and there'll be a discussion, and they have to choose somebody to share whatever it is with. So, how, you know, it could be either you need to share a value or something they're grateful for. Or it doesn't matter. But they have, they have, they're losing the ability to be able to have a conversation. So, when I get them in these discussions, they think it's rocket science. They go, Wow, that was really good. Can we do that again? Yeah, I mean, it's just a matter of educating people. It's called the conversation. And I get a real kick out of that, that they think that it's... So now I'm cutting edge because I'm bringing people together <laughs> to talk. <laughs> well, you, you could have picked anything to do, but you decided to do something that really helps the world. And I think that's going to help you as well. I mean, it, Oh, it, it does. It, it yeah, does help I mean, me. Yeah, I'm I'm always very excited about my work and the people I get to and privileged to be with and that's great. and uh, it's uh, always evolving, as I said. I'm always thinking of new ways to reach reach out, you know, and, and make a difference. Thank goodness for people like you. Um do you have a website? I do. It's fit for defense dot C A. So it's fit or with the number defense with an S dot CA for Canada. I'm up and in I'll Canada. I'll put that in the description of the program. So I thank you, you so much for, for putting up with me. Um, yeah, you were good. Uh, all right. So thank you very much for being on the show and take care of yourself. And uh, thank you for doing the important work. Thank you for having me. I really enjoyed talking.